Okay, looks, looks like we're recording. It's uh, 6, 5.30. So let's go ahead and convene this meeting of the Board of Directors in the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for July 21st, 2022. Uh, would you take the roll, Holly? President Mayhood? Here. Vice President Ackman? Here. Director Falls? Here. Director Hill? Here. Director Smalley? Here. Okay. Are there any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? The staff has none, Chair. Okay. Uh, let's see. This is the time for oral communications regarding the items in closed session, but I don't see any attendees um, other than those of us on the panel. Um, so I guess there won't be any oral communications. So with that, we'll adjourn to closed session. See you there. Let's see if she's the attendee. Well, I think I'll go ahead and, um, oh, there she is, okay. Okay, with that, I'd like to convene this meeting of the Board of Directors of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District for July 21st, 2022 again. Um, and we have no actions to report out of closed session. Um, can we have the roll call, please, Holly? President Mayhood? Here. Vice President Ackman? Here. Director Falls? Here. Director Hill? Here. Director Smalley? Here. Okay. Um, are there any additions or deletions to the agenda for tonight? Staff has none, Chair. Okay. Um, this is the time for oral communications by members of the public on items within the purview of the district that are not on the agenda tonight. Are there any comments from Mark Dolson, who is our sole <laughs> attendee right now? I want to congratulate Mark for being here. He's... It's July. <laughs> All right. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and um, next item is the president's report. I'll just report that the administrative committee voted to uh, fill the uh, open position on the committee and that the position has already been posted and advertised. Okay, um, so then we'll turn to unfinished business, which is our perennial remote meeting authorization. And um, we just need somebody to make a motion to adopt the resolution. And, or let's, is there any comment on it first? No? How about from members of the public? Okay, then can I have a motion, please? I will move the recommendation for to continue the uh, authorization for remote meetings. Okay. So we're proclaiming an ongoing state of local emergency and authorizing remote I'll, meetings. I'll second. Okay, thank you. Um, Holly, would you take a vote, please? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Falls? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, now we turn to new business. Uh, the first item of new business is delinquent water charges that are to be placed um, on the tax roll. Rick? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Chair. This is a, a holdover item from our last board meeting. As the board knows that we had to cancel the meeting due to power outage. Um, water code uh, allows the, the district to collect delinquent and unpaid charges for water and other services by referring uh, them and collecting them through the county tax rolls. The district adopted a utility billing policy establishing uh, the county's tax roll as the district's primary collection method for the past uh, due balances. Uh, the district is moving forward with this being a main means of collection 
delinquent water bill charges. Attached is a resolution uh, in the amount of $59,751.46 to be put on the property tax rolls to uh, collect uh, past due accounts. Uh, this amount is uh, a total through 12-31-2021. The past due amounts remaining after the resolution is 230,000 and that's through May uh, of this year. Uh, with that, there's a uh, additional information uh, in the memo uh, and I'm asking the board to adopt the attached resolution with a total amount to go on property tax uh, taxes in the amount of 59,751.46. Okay. Um, are there any questions or comments from members of the board? Uh, um, yes, Rick, with the, I would have thought it would have been higher, I guess, as my, um, my initial reaction to this. With 230k remaining, um, why did we limit it to over 500? And um, you know, is there a way to recover more of this sooner than 12/31/2022? I'm not sure of that. I mean, I can get those questions answered. Uh, I'll uh, reach out to the district's finance manager, who's uh, working remotely, and get those questions answered. I know that uh, some accounts are not eligible to be placed on the tax rolls that they have a value of less than two. Right. You, know, right. you can see that in the, me uh, in the yep. uh, memo and we're only sending balances to the tax rolls uh, as of 1231, uh, 21 with a threshold over $500. And I'm not sure if that's a county uh, requirement or not, but I can uh, get some yep. more information from Kendra. And, and then is there a way for us to address the I apologize for my, I seem to have some background noise here. Is there a way to address these parcels that are less than 2K that have a water connection no one's ever going to pay for, Rick? Uh, right, like, you know, there could be a write-off or of accounts or we could send to collection. I mean, these are the accounts, too, that they're not using any water. The meters are just setting out there. It's a service charge. So we're, you know, we are reading the meter monthly. Um, we could review that uh, and look at removing those meters. That might be easier said than done. Uh, I'll speak to legal on that, on discontinuing service and write those off. I know uh, not too long ago, we did write off a considerable amount of accounts that were outstanding because of uh, uh, abandoned services. I, I'd have to uh, look back at that. But we could, uh, the finance manager, I do believe, is coming back part-time uh, in uh, August, uh, and uh, we can put this back uh, on the finance committee agenda and start some discussion as well and get, yeah. get more information to you. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a cost for those, and we're not collecting any money. So. You're Great, very you. hard to hear. You seem to be muffled on my end. Mark? Yes. Um, is this the first time that the district has utilize this method for recovery of these past accounts? This is, this is the first time in the history of the district that we switched to uh, the property tax rule, but I don't believe it's the first time that we put in for collection. I will double check on that, Mark. I think we put in the collection one time before. Okay. Holly, did you um, want to answer that? your knowledge? I was just going to say, yes, this was done once before. Last time okay. we went on the tax okay. rolls. And, and what's what's the approximate time span for this 59,000 then? Uh, three years, 10 years? To receive it? No, 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 Th that, we've in, that we've accrued these charges. I will find that out. What period of time? It sounds like Mark may have the same feedback. But is he coming through okay with you guys? I'm going to reconnect. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments? Um, I've, I've got one. Do we do this Go annually going forward? I do believe so, yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. That's all my question. Okay, so we um, need somebody to uh, move the resolution. Anybody like to do that? I'll move that we um, approve the resolution to put the uh, delinquent property taxes on the rolls for the county to collect. Okay. Um, is there a second? I'm right. sorry. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any uh, comment by members of the public? No? All right, Holly, would you like to call a roll call vote, please? President Mayhood? Aye. Vice President Ackman? Yes. Director Pulse? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Resolution passes. Okay, so the next item of uh, new business is the draft response uh, to the grand jury report. And um, if you'll remember, we voted um, to go ahead and ask the staff to prepare this based on some uh, input that she got from members of the board um, and that Jamie and I would um, then uh, work with the staff to modify that further. And that's what we did. Um, uh, and that what the product of that is what you see is the draft response here. Okay. Um, Jamie, did you want to start discussion of this? Um, well, first of all, I, I appreciate all of the work that um, went into this on the part of um, Gina and and Rick and and uh, Carly and uh, Chair Mayhood. Um, I uh, was not as involved as I wanted to be. This was a really um, busy time for me at work, but um, I uh, so I just wanted to acknowledge that and um, thank you all for um, putting this together. I think that it, uh, in my view, expresses some of the concerns that we had about the way that we felt that San Lorenzo Valley water district issues were characterized in the grand jury report um, without being um, unnecessarily, you know, I, I think one of the points that Gina um, made to us uh, when we were meeting uh, about this last week was that there were some opportunities to agree or partially agree and we wanted to try and do that where possible um, to show that we were you know, understanding and recognizing and agreeing with some of the issues as well. Um, so um, with that, I think I'll open it up to any other comments. Yeah, I, I think I'll just amplify on what Jamie just said, which was, I think that, um, you know, even though initially I was kind of grumpy about the grand jury report, I think that Gina convinced us that um, taking a positive tack was more productive. And um, I think also it was our opportunity. I think Bob, you suggested this, that, you know, we expand some of our um, responses to uh, hit on the points that we thought are important. And so we did that. Sometimes even when we agreed, we took an opportunity to say something. And the one thing that you'll see that we hit over and over and over is the conjunctive use plan and how important that is uh, for our district. So I think that um, that it, it was successful at, at doing that, um, successful at being uh, sufficiently respectful of the grand jury's effort. Um, and so I, I'm actually pretty happy with the, the result. Um, Bob, did you wanna have anything to say about it? Well, yeah, just to, on a recap of the process, you know, grand jury reports um, are to be taken seriously, as I think I've said before, but they're also a political document as well. And that's why I think it's important that the elected um, members have input into the process. And so I'm glad that, that you and Jamie had, had the opportunity to do that. Um, like you, Gail, I, I, I'm glad that we were able to put um, more messaging 
into the response beyond simply agree, partially, or disagree, even where we did agree. Um, I thought that was very important. And so I'm really happy with how it turned out. And it's sort of along the lines of what I was hoping it would, it would be. Um, I, I do uh, still remain a little concerned about the process in terms of input from a broad range of people to get really the true picture. But I think we were able to augment the report sufficiently with our message to do that. Okay. Jeff? Oh, this is a question for Gina. Uh, from a process point of view, this is a civil grand jury. Uh, what happens now? We have a response if we, uh, presumably, I, I'm assuming, but you know, we would will vote here, and if we decide to forward this on to the grand jury, what's next? What's the procedure? Sure, and I'll I'll, I'll actually be pretty detailed, hopefully not being too tedious. Um, so. The board does have to approve this, as you mentioned. We actually have to write in here the date on which the board adopted a motion approving the responses. Mm -hmm. Then we can send it to the grand jury uh, before the August 22nd deadline. Um, the grand jury will post the responses on its website along with everybody else's responses to the grand jury report. Um, something that you, some of you I'm sure are aware of, you may not all be aware of, is that the grand jury turns over in the summer. So the grand jury that wrote this report is on the way out. The new grand jurors are on the way in. Um, it's very common that there's no follow-up at all to grand jury reports. The, re the report and the responses just get posted on the website. However, the district has had a different experience. Um, with respect to the grand jury report uh, that was written about the district in 2017, um, the grand jury did request, had, had some follow-up requests for information, I think twice um, regarding the district's project uh, progress in implementing uh, the findings and some of the other things that the district said it would do in the, in the content of the responses to the grand jury report. So um, it's, it's, the grand jury could take an interest in following up and, and request some additional information from the district and other respondents. But overall, that's actually not very common. Usually, it, just the report and all the responses get posted to the website, and that's the end of it. That's kind of what I thought. Um, Jeff, did you have any comments uh, on the report, it's the response itself? I was very happy with the answers, um, and particularly, um, you know, when I read the original report, I didn't feel that they had a very good view of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District and what we do as opposed to the city of Santa Cruz and some of the other areas they were talking about. And I thought we did a good job of educating uh, people who will read this as to why some of the things they were asking for just don't make sense for us or aren't practical in the time frame that they were looking at. So okay. overall, I'm quite happy with it. Okay. Mark? Yes, I have uh, two general questions and two editorial comments uh, that I'd like to go through. Um, on page 62 of the agenda, uh, on finding number one, it references uh, no growth policies in the valley. And it's just for my education, what policies do we have uh, for no growth? The county, it was voted on, I think, back in the 70s, wasn't it, Rick? And uh, it's a county policy. But zoning and other restrictions are pretty severe for any new construction. Yeah. Particular okay. septic uh, restrictions, things like that. Even so, remodeling. Yeah. So, okay. Just to, okay, just those, to clarify that, that there were areas that were said to be little or no growth, which San Lorenzo Valley is one, versus those areas that are targeted for the state mandated increase in housing. And those include Scotts Valley and the city of Santa Cruz. And so that's the contrast we're okay. trying to. I like. I see. Okay, uh, moving on then. 
Um, on page uh, 66, comment uh, for finding F6, where we're referencing uh, taking Loch Lomond water, the, the statement is made, the district has not used our allotment of Loch Lomond water for many decades. Um, to me, that implies that we have used it in the past. And it was my understanding that we have not used it at all. No, we've used it. We have? Stopped, oh, okay. Stopped, stopped in the 70s, I think, late 70s, wasn't that right? Yeah, I think the last time we used it was, I do believe, 76, 77. I actually operated that Glen Arbor treatment plant. We, yeah, we, I, you know, I, okay. I believe I believe we had to stop because of the increased um, requirements for treatment. And well, we didn't, there was no place to discharge. The, the treatment facility was inadequate and to treat the water. And we also had a lot of taste and odor complaints. Okay. Um, two editorial comments um, on page 67 uh, for finding F8 where we reference the uh, groundwater sustainability plan. Uh, it seemed to me like that should be, those should be capitalized words since it was uh, referring to a specific plan aspect. Um, and I thought we should also include the date when that plan was adopted. So how about uh, Mark, if we change that to uh, the groundwater sustainability plan submitted in January uh, 2020, was it 2021 or 2022? 2022. 2022. Yeah, this year. <laughs> yeah, this year. <laughs> right. 2020, submitted right. in 2022 okay. by Margarita. Right. Okay? And yes, that is recent, but to me, having a date with it, since no, no, that, we know so, what the date is. So we'll good just point. Say, and submitted, because that's when it was... Submitted. Right, it was submitted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. January 2022. Blah, blah, blah. So otherwise the sentence is the same. Well, I, yeah, otherwise that's the take same. that as a friendly amendment. Did you get that, Gina? Okay. Uh, I did get it. Thank you. Okay. Right. And likewise, on page 67 for that F8 finding, um, the last sentence to me, I think, would be stronger. Um, if for the last several words, um, as being limited and, and narrow in scope were in quotes and italics to specifically point to the fact that we're quoting part of that finding statement and that's what we're disagreeing with. Yeah, I, I think that's a good suggestion. So, um... I'll, I'll take that as a friendly edit. Could I, okay. Could I just suggest okay. using the quotes without the the italics to um, um, if we underscore okay. it to an unusual degree, it may start to look a little hostile or something. Oh, okay. All right. I'm okay with hostile. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's it. Thank you. Okay. So with those two edits, um, are there any comments uh, by members of the public? Don't see any. Um, so uh, I guess then what we're voting on doing is um, accepting this uh, draft with the two changes, uh, editorial changes that Mark has suggested um, and directing staff to submit it uh, to the grand jury. Yes. I, is that a motion? I think it's a motion. I second it. Okay. Um, can we have a roll call vote, Holly? President Mayhood. Yes. Vice President Ackerman. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. And I, is it the case that we're a month early, Jane, in, in the response? That is, I know, that it's amazing. Really huh? great work on the part of staff and you guys. Thank you. Well, the, the other good thing about this of us having it early is 
Um, I am also helping with uh, writing the uh, Santa Margarita one, and it's allowed me to sort of harmonize the, I, I've actually just plagiarized some of our language <laughs> in some cases. And so I think that that's been an advantage of getting this done sooner rather than later. It works. So, so I okay. have to ask then, yeah. is Professor Mayhood going to be accused Citing. of plagiarism? Citing? Yeah. Citations. I, I asked legal counsel about that, and she said that that's perfectly acceptable in this kind of situation. <laughs> okay. Okay. He's just grinding. I'm plagiarizing on you. myself. He's grinding on you. Okay. All right. Um, next item of business is a, a letter from uh, the district to uh, Supervisor McPherson about uh, the uh, Bear Creek Estates wastewater treatment plant. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'll try not to wander uh, uh, with this subject. Uh, we just recently learned from an article uh, in the local Sentinel that the county has received a, a $2 million grant funding uh, to uh, investigate or a feasibility study for the expansion of the county's wastewater system in Boulder Creek. That's, that's the wastewater system that's located up at um, the Boulder Creek Golf and Country Club. The district is trying to and has been trying to work with Supervisor, Supervisor McPherson and the county for some time, um, trying to uh, get the county interested in consolidating or taking over, consolidating the, the Bear Creek wastewater uh, system into the, to the county uh, system for some time. It wasn't too long ago, right after the CZU fire, that this uh, expansion came up uh, as part of a downtown sewer, and it would be uh, also incorporate the, the areas that the CZU fire impacted homes that were right on streams, making their septic systems very difficult to replace or very expensive, $100,000 and up uh, per home for an enhanced system. Uh, I spoke with Supervisor McPherson some time ago and his aide uh, regarding this project and how the district was extremely interested to be part uh, of this discussion. Um, for those of you who maybe not know, the district owns and operates the, the Bear Creek Estates wastewater system. There's approximately 56 homes uh, on this system. The system for probably close to 30 years has not been in compliance and has a compliance order uh, on the uh, on the facility not being able to meet uh, treatment uh, criteria from the Regional Water Quality Control Board and the County of Santa Cruz. That treatment criteria is a 50% reduction in nitrogen. Uh, we have some other serious um, uh, problems uh, in treating wastewater to the point that where the treatment process needs to be replaced. Very expensive process uh, to replace, but uh, the expense to replace, you know, may be covered by grant, but the ongoing O&M that was estimated for the new system would probably increase uh, by about 30% the already high rate that our customers pay. They pay $257 a month for wastewater service. That's $257 a month for wastewater, doesn't include their water bill. So they're looking at already very extreme, uh, what I would call extreme uh, wastewater rates uh, out in Bear Creek. We've met with the people many a times and tried to work with those people in trying to find an alternative to the type of treatment. We've done studies, we wind up spending considerable funds for uh, 56 homes and have not been able to solve this problem. Uh, I look at the potential for those folks to tie into the county wastewater system that's going up to the golf course uh, that will uh, start in downtown Boulder Creek as a way to bring those costs down and to solve this problem once and for all. The wastewater system leach field that we have is reaching its life expectancy. We will not be able to find another uh, location to relocate a three to five acre leach field. Um, you know, 
this is a very positive project. I think it's very positive for the community. And I was kind of taken back when I read in the paper that this was moving forward and the district uh, was not uh, contacted uh, to be part uh, of this project. You know, it wasn't too long ago when Director uh, Ackman uh, and myself met with Congressman Pernetta and we discussed this right up in, in Boulder Creek, the importance of this. Um, I do believe Ann Eshoo's office uh, has been aware of this wastewater problem as well. I put, we put this uh, letter together in hopes that uh, Supervisor McPherson will work at the county to put Bear Creek Estates as part of this feasibility study and get this project as part of that project. I don't believe we should stop with this letter to Supervisor McPherson. I think that we should uh, utilize our contacts with uh, the Congressman Pernetta, uh, John Laird, uh, Ann Eshoo's office, um, and get the people at Bear Creek Estates, meet with them very shortly, get a letter campaign to, uh, to the county going and support. And don't take no for an answer this time. Um, you know, we've moved ahead and done a lot of things and helped the county out, uh, one being the Lompico merger. And we talked to Bruce about, at that time, to think about consolidation and taking Bear Creek over. They looked at the system and said, you know, thanks, but no thanks. And now we're, you know, looking at taking over the huge undertaking of the Big Basin merger. I think it's time that the, the county uh, steps up and helps the district out and helps the people of Bear Creek Estates. Uh, this is also a huge water quality issue. For those of you who don't know, the Bear Creek wastewater leach field sets 100 feet off of Bear Creek, off of Bear Creek Road. Uh, this would be a huge benefit for the people of Santa Cruz Bar. Um, it's a very, very positive project, and I'm, I'm kind of taken back that we weren't included, and I think this should be the, the first letter of a huge campaign uh, by this district, this board, uh, in support of getting this turned over to uh, the county. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Sure. Okay. Jamie? Thanks. Um, so, uh, and, and Rick, you, you touched on part of my comment um, in the letter. I, I, I think it, you know, is a good start. I, I would add some, uh, a paragraph to the letter about our desire to be a good neighbor and partner in our community and the evidence of that um, being, you know, the, 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 our history in, in working side by side with our partners at the county to help address problems for our, our neighbors like we are doing in Big Basin and like we did with Lompico. Um, and I'm sure that there are other things that we could add to that. You know, I, I, I don't wanna be heavy handed about it, but I do wanna make the point that when the county comes to us, you know, we really do try to be a good partner in solving these problems for these communities. And um, we're really hopeful that the county will, will be a good partner with us in solving this problem for Bear Creek. Um, and, you know, so that's uh, my first comment on the letter. Um, if the rest of the board thinks it's appropriate to add some language along those lines, um, I would recommend that as a friendly amendment to the letter. Um, and uh, secondarily, I just, you know, I want to support the idea of doing some outreach to these communities. I think in addition to soliciting some um, letters from the Bear Creek homeowners who, who could potentially be beneficiaries, we should solicit a letter from the city of Santa Cruz as well. They obviously have, uh, you know, some potential benefit if uh, the water coming down the river is cleaner um, when it gets to them. So it'd be nice to see them supporting that uh, as well. Okay. Bob? Yes, I just to put a, a, a firmer period on what Rick was talking about rates, if you read the report, I believe the rates um, under the new system, and this is operating costs, we're going to be estimated around $500 a month. Um, and I don't remember if that's year one or year out, but it, these rates were going to be escalating at very, very rapid pace. Um, I, I think this is a, a great to try. I mean, unfortunately, I think this is a recurring uh, issue um, that we in the San Lorenzo Valley um, face uh, relative to attention. So I, I like Jamie's idea about reminding folks that, you know, we really do um, try to work together and have done so. 
on numerous occasions. Um, at some point, there may be a discussion about a line from Bear Creek Estates down to uh, Boulder Creek. Um, how many miles is that, Rick? A couple. Yeah, it's it's a ways. I don't know, James might know. I, you know, I'm thinking it's like a five mile. Um, it's a ways. There's it's no a ways. And, and so, you know, the, the cost of that is is likely to be pretty big as well. My disappointment in the report was that it did not take into account the other technologies that are available for um, septic um, due to, candidly, county limitations. And that um, one way or the other, this issue is not going away unless the county is prepared to buy people out of their house, um, you know, which is just would not at all make any sense. So we need to be working with the county on this other than um, just saying, hey, you know, it is what it is. It doesn't have to be this way, but it will require folks thinking differently and out of the box. And right now, um, I, I'm not sure we're getting there. Mark? Yes, um, I agree with nearly everything that has been said, uh, except for one comment that Jamie was making as to reaching out to the city uh, and pointing out to the city that if they participated in this, it would overall improve their water quality. Um, the district is responsible for the water quality. The district is responsible for that wastewater treatment system. Um, I don't want to point out to the city that, oh, and part of the reason why water quality might not be so good is because our treatment system, it's not the residents, it's the district's water system, wastewater water treatment system. It's not meeting criteria or conditions. So that's my only comment on that. Thanks. Okay, Jeff, did you have a comment, a question? Okay, uh, circle back to you, Jamie. Um, I just wanted to respond to uh, Director Smalley's comment, and, and I, I appreciate what you're saying, Mark. I really do, you know, caution being the better part of valor. Um, but uh, I, I think that the city is probably aware of, I mean, I'm sure that they're aware of the condition at Bear Creek. We've been out of compliance for decades. Um, they are certainly aware that the, uh, you know, that the, the, they have um, a, a ongoing problem with their water quality as a result of the high um, concentration of septic systems that we have in, in the San Lorenzo Valley. Um, but I, I guess I just don't think that pointing this, I don't think we're pointing anything out to them that they're probably not already aware of as an existing condition, um, because I believe the compliance order comes from the state of California. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, getting their support uh, in, in asking the county to do this um, gives us more leverage with the county to get this into um, their, their study so that we can potentially benefit from it. Um, so, you know, I, but I appreciate the comment, Mark. Uh, Jeff? You're muted, Jeff. So my thought on this is that with the city of Santa Cruz and the quality of Bear Creek water, this might be something better uh, discussed with them rather than put in writing. And therefore, I don't think I would put it in this letter, but we might want to have a, an informal conversation with them on the subject. I think the plan would be we would meet with them and ask for their support. The, yes. All of the information about our water quality and our non-compliance and our compliance order is listed on the Regional Water Quality Control Board's website. The city's very aware. It's just one of many areas yeah. that nitrate comes in from in the San Lorenzo Valley. Mm -hmm. I think we would just look, we would look for support in you know, moving to get this cleaned up, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but it would come further down the road, it wouldn't be put in this letter. Mm -hmm. 
Huh? Remnant of the early story. Okay. Did everybody catch that, or was it Michael? No, he's just saying it's, he still has had his hand up from the last time. So, okay. Um, so, uh, I think my general impression is that we shouldn't put anything about the city of Santa Cruz and water quality. I mean, our, you know, the contribution of nitrates from that 50 households is is not a big deal compared to all the zillions of septic systems there are. Um, pouring into San Lorenzo River. So I, I, I and I would not want to put it in writing um, given our somewhat contentious uh, relationships with the city of Santa Cruz. But but I, I do appreciate um, Jamie's suggestion of maybe um, adding a short paragraph to the point that uh, we're, we have been a good partner, um, but I guess we can say that, but then how do you want us to finish that uh, sentence? Like, so it doesn't, do you have a suggestion for how you would like that worded? Um, I would say something along the lines of, you know, we we um, have stood ready to be a good partner, um, you know, in, in addressing some of the, the you know, critical, I don't know, uh, crisis is not the word I want to use, but maybe Gina will find a better, you, you know, s s critical circumstances some of our neighboring communities have faced. Um, and, and we are hopeful that the county um, uh, will support um, us as we try to address this, you know, um, ongoing, I don't want to call it critical, but, you know, ongoing. Um, I think, Rick, you used a, a some language when we talked about this being kind of the last opportunity for this community um, to get folded into a project of this nature. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of where I was going with, we've been a good partner to the county and we're really um, looking for the county um, to, to partner with us in, in trying to creatively solve the problem that this Bear Creek community faces, something along those lines. In, in, in improving, and this is the Bear Creek's, I mean, I, I look at this as Bear Creek doesn't have any other options outside of, you know, talking like we're uh, on different types of projects. And there's a host of different types of wastewater systems out there, um, but the county, as Bob says, the county will not accept something outside the box. So I, you know, I, I think it was looking to the county to to support uh, the district on, on improving of the, of the of the of our public infrastructure. If I could just clarify one thing, I mean, I I agree with um, that language uh, that that Rick was suggesting around this being, you know, uh, an opportunity for the community to. Um, but going back to the earlier conversation, I just want to clarify, I did not want to add language about the city of Santa Cruz to the letter. I just wanted to reach out, as Rick suggested, to the city of Santa Cruz and ask them if they would consider writing a letter of their own supporting this. So there shouldn't be any message, any mention of the city of Santa Cruz or the water quality issues, um, in my view, in this letter. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Gina, uh, how would you like to proceed on this? Since we don't have exact wording, um, do we need to bring it back to the board? I, I do feel there's a little bit of an urgency thing here to get it sent off to. Um, really, the only reason this was brought to the board is because it's drafted to come out under the board president signature. So you're, he would be acting as sort of the spokesperson of the board to make sure the board agrees with the message before okay. um, you sign the letter. So it doesn't need to be perfectly wordsmith um, okay. unless it doesn't even really need a vote if there's a consensus okay. of the board for you to send this as long as the board is comfortable that you're delivering the message of the board um, through this letter. All right. Um, well, okay, then uh, can we just have um, a voice vote uh, in terms of um, all in favor of sending a letter um, along these lines with uh, Jamie's suggested additions? 
All in favor say aye, please. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Extensions? Okay. All right. So we'll uh, give it to Gina to craft a couple more sentences. I don't think we want to make it much longer. I like the idea that it's just a single page, you know, tends to, when you're sending it to a politician, boy, we don't want it to get too long. Um, I, I just want to clarify, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't involved in the drafting, so I, oh, I think it's you're up right. to Rick I did whether it. he okay. wants to. <laughs> <you're right. laughs> okay, I'll fix it. And I'll, I'll run it by you, Gina, a lot longer Gina you and Rick, okay? We can redo it again. Okay. Probably it's in there somewhere, too. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I've, been, I've been editing so much stuff recently, I've forgotten, like, what? What's what? Bob, you have your hand up. Uh, just uh, just that I'd be uh, interested in having the response come back to the board if, if there is one. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. What is our next item of business? Is uh, a port, appoint a board member liaison to the Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee. Yes, uh, thank you. We're asking the board tonight to select uh, or appoint a board liaison to the Lompico Assessment District Oversight Committee um, with the uh, resignation of Director Henry, who held that post in the past. Uh, there is a vacancy. Uh, we're asking uh, the board to select uh, one of the board members tonight to make as the Lompico liaison, and then we will reach out to the, the Laddock uh, committee, uh, I do believe that they have to review the board selection. Um, as you might remember, um, Bob volunteered to go to the recent meeting on short notice. Um, he attended that, um, and um, I, I would like to uh, nominate him to continue on as the liaison in this. I don't think uh, Bob or I think it's going to be a, a big job. Um, they're kind of finishing up their their work, but we do need to have somebody as liaison given the um, rules that were established in terms of setting up the LADOC. Um, so that's, that's my suggestion. Is that a motion or? Uh, well, we can discuss it if anybody wants to, but yeah, if you'd like me to make it a motion, I will. I'll, I'll move that we appoint Bob as the um, liaison to LADOC. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Okay. Any discussion by members of the public? No? All right. Then, Holly, you want to take a vote? President Mayhood? Yes. Vice President Ackerman? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Hill? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes, with a thank you. Yeah, yes, thank you, Bob, for being willing to, to do this. They're great folks, I love them. The, the committee is down to only three members now, um, I think as they're winding, winding up. Um, Holly is doing a good job of kind of um, getting them organized, but um, we do have this obligation to um, continue to work with them. All right, final item of new business is our drug and alcohol policy. Uh, I, I think this one is in my court, uh, Chairman Hood. Um, the reason that this item is coming before you is that the district is required um, when it accepts great state grant funds to be in compliance with the Drug Free Workplace Act under California law. Um, and the district in particular needs to certify its compliance for purposes of um, finalizing uh, the grant award for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder. So the district does have a policy along these lines that was adopted many years ago. Um, but uh, I was asked to do a legal review before the district certifies its compliance for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Project. And so what you have in front of you is an updated version of the policy 
that really just tracks the state law requirements. Um, it's very straightforward. There's nothing in here really that's beyond what the state law requires. There's a lot of additional things that could be in a drug and alcohol policy, and the district may want to look at them, particularly for purposes of compliance with federal requirements. Um, but in the interest of getting the Fall Creek Fish Ladder uh, grant award finalized, we kept it simple and just ask that you approve this um, revision and update to the, the district's uh, drug and alcohol policy. Rick, did you have anything you wanted to add? Uh, no, it's a, a pretty straightforward. Um, I, I reviewed it, um, uh, and we're you know moving ahead to implement. Uh, there's a couple of minor changes, and to make sure that staff is aware of those changes, and we'll be contacting individual staff and so forth. Um, but it's pretty straightforward, as council has said. Uh, looks like Bob, you have a hand up. Uh, just a, a couple of questions. Um, what is the definition of controlled substance? I'm sure it's in the code, but just for benefit of everybody. Uh, I am going to that right now. Uh, I, I knew you'd find it faster than I would. Is, is it a federal definition or a state definition? Um, that is a good question. And um, I believe because there are in, different... let, let me let me Bob it, because it's in the state code it's a state definition that's not a cross reference to federal law but I don't have the actual definition in front of me but what I can assure you of is that that because of the context it's not a reference to federal law okay good because there are differences and some things are okay under state but not under federal as I understand it is that correct Yes, you're, you're correct. And um, that's a great question. And uh, this is a state law only reference. Okay. And if someone violates or gets convicted, but it was on their own time, no harm, no foul at that point, correct? No disciplinary action taken. Well, at least general, generally speaking, this is about workplace issues. So right. this is not, there's nothing in this policy that would seek to penalize employees for conduct that's strictly personal or off duty. And um, last question, did we remove the notification requirement because we're gonna get notified anyway, or is there some other process for that? Uh, well, so the reason that it was removed is, um, I, you know, this was written in the 1990s, and, and frankly, I think it's a little bit questionable um, to have Without doing a lot of legal research, um, I had questions about the legality of that type of a notification, um, particularly when um, it, it says there's a certain amount of time within which employees must notify the district. Sure. But I'm not sure employees have been made aware of this policy for a very long time. And so how exactly that would be enforced is a little, um, it's a little, it's a little confusing and it makes the, the policy complicated. But I would also note that that, that notification provision um, pertains to workplace violations. And it's very, very difficult to imagine that an employee, district employee could have a workplace related drug conviction today that the district wouldn't know about. Yeah, that's what I meant, is that we would yeah. know about it already because it happened on the job. So if there was a violation, we'd follow up and figure out if they got convicted. Okay, great, thanks. Amy? Do we, um, if a, a an employee who was driving a, a water district vehicle were, were it to be involved in an accident, do we require drug testing um, at the time of the accident? Or alcohol testing, I guess? Um, we do not. Now, law enforcement may. Uh, there's a suspicion, but the district as a rule does not. It, it, I, I guess I don't know what, you know, the distinctions are, but, you know, in, in my past employment, because I worked in public transportation, you know, obviously uh, those were safety sensitive positions. And so anyone operating a district vehicle, whether it was, you know, with 
passengers on board or whether it was a non-passenger vehicle was subject to a drug and alcohol testing um, at the time of a, a vehicular incident. So I just don't know what um, the obligations are that we have uh, regarding, um, you know, our, you know, responsibilities if one of our employees are uh, involved in an incident like that. We have protocol uh, in place if there is an incident that a supervisor suspects drug or alcohol use that we move through. Um, but in the case of an accident, most likely that would be taken care of, of law enforcement by law. And or an injury accident requires. Right. And, and I would add that this is an area where I, I think the policy would benefit from um, being checked against federal law requirements, but that's a bigger yeah. undertaking than um, that will take more time that um, may not be consistent with getting everything settled for Fall Creek right away. Understood. All right. Uh, so we need a... Uh, motion regarding um, this, I guess. I move to yes. adopt the revised uh, drug policy as presented by board council and uh, implement it uh, forthwith. Yeah, and, and, and if I could request, if the motion is to, we'll just adopt the resolution, the resolution sort of. Okay. Yeah. Explaining what exactly is being done. Yep. I'll second that. Okay. I'm just looking for the resolution. Yeah, and, and, and board chair, I just did want to flag uh, public comment on this item. Okay. Um, all right, can we take a vote, please? Yeah. Uh, so, Mayhood, um, yeah. could you go out for public comment Board. first? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not sure there will be any given. The go ahead. Attendance. Mark, do you have a comment on the drug and alcohol policy? That would be no. No? All right. Um, let's go ahead and take a vote. I just wanted to mention that page seven of 23 on this item is the um, uh, resolution. Okay. President Mayhood. Thank you. Hi. Vice President Ackman. Yes, and I'm going to excuse myself because my daughter who's been gone for a year just walked through the door. <laughs> Director Falls. Yes. Director Hill. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. It, okay. It's a blurred background, but we might get to see it. So that passed. Um, next, we come to the consent agenda. Um, is, would any member of the board like to pull anything from the consent agenda? No? How about members of the public? No? Okay. Then with, without objection, um, it is adopted. And next we come to uh, district reports. Um, is there a, a district manager report tonight? Uh, tonight there is not, Chair. Sure. Okay. Um, how about uh, any comments on the department status reports? Mark? Yes, I've got to ask about the Fall Creek Fish Ladder. And the comment that we see in the engineering report from that. Um, I don't see Josh available, so I'm guessing Rick. Yes, um, uh, you know, Josh's comment is, is, is correct. We are, are working um, with the contractor uh, on getting his submittals, and um, it's been slow. So, am I correct? No work has started. No construction work has started. Correct. Okay. And the next question is? Go ahead, Bob. You ask it. Well, the next question on that one is, so are we going to run out of time? Yeah. <laughs> to get this done this year? Yeah. Has serious concerns about the 
contractor's ability to complete uh, this project uh, before uh, um, we have to be out of the stream and meet the regulatory uh, deadlines. The district uh, expects to make a decision about how to proceed soon. We have a backup. I would like to keep it at that statement for now, directors. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments on uh, department status reports? Bob? Well, Mark, if you've got more questions, Mark, go ahead. You were there first. Okay. Um, on the Redwood Park tank, uh, we've continued to see uh, we're delayed in trying to locate uh, all of the piping in the area. Um, have we utilized or considered utilizing a third party outside utility locator to assist us with this? Well, I think the, uh, the, the problem now is that uh, we're out to bid, but we are not getting any materials from contractors six to eight months without a estimated arrival time. And now it is filtering down to the day-to-day -day parts. We are not getting water meters, mm -hmm. we're not getting any brass, we're not getting any steel. Um, we are coming to a screeching halt uh, on our projects. Mm -hmm. The pipeline is out to bid and I do believe Josh kicked it out another week uh, before closing for the Redwood Park pipeline up to the tank to move it ahead. But we are having a real problem with material supply chain. Um, and we're not getting, you know, uh, any type of definite dates for delivery. We have some valves out, and one of the valves that we're looking for for the Bear Creek uh, wastewater system is um, going to be in a month or two, um, and it's two to four. Right. I understand the uh, supply chain issues that we have industry-wide. The comment in the report was we're still trying to locate existing and abandoned piping under the ground at that location. I do believe that's been completed. James, do you have an update on that? On the locates up at Redwood Park? Yeah, that's all been complete. We dug everything up, verified size, location, everything. Okay. We're good to go. Okay. All right. Anything else, Mark? Uh, not on the engineering. I do have okay. one on the environmental, and it's a more global go question. Um, and I'll go to Bob. Okay. Um, I see a number of uh, permitting grant tracking, um, conjunctive use plan uh, formulating, um, and, and other aspects. And Rick, I have to ask the general question, uh, is, is Carly overloaded with work? And in particular, I, I went back and I looked at one of the items. It's the issuing the request for proposals for the Bracken Brain Forest Springs work uh, for the environmental aspect, which we do have a clock ticking on, being end of next year to get the construction completed. Uh, exchanges were, yes, she agreed mid March that we should get that started. It's now four months later. Is she overloaded? Is there something else we need to do to, to support her? outside consultant. Uh, well, we, we've made a, a lot of changes in with the management team. I will say on that particular item, I do believe that's been in my inbox. And she has asked me several times uh, recently to get that out. It is completed and it's ready to go. I just need to sign off on it. We have been, we do have a considerable amount of work going on. We do have a position out to replace Carly uh, to, to give her help uh, and her previous position uh, as an environmental planner, that will help. But 
there's several staff members uh, involved and I, I've been holding that one up uh, and that'll move ahead uh, by the end of this week, which is tomorrow and get that out. Oh, and, you know, okay. we've been working, Carly and I have been working together to try to, to organize, to try to, to get, you know, planning done, uh, much better scheduling and so forth. You know, I'm hoping, and, and I've been holding a lot of this up because I don't want to race right through it. Um, we want to do it right. Um, so I, I do uh, understand that there is, it is time sensitive and hopefully that we get a little better uh, on track. And again, that one's my, that's my fault. Um, but we've been spending some, you know, what I consider quality time, which takes time on scheduling and putting, you know, the management team working uh, to get us better organized. Okay. Could I just, uh, Rick, can you tell us about the specifics of the environmental position and <laughs> has that been advertised? When When is that we hoping to? Uh, Carly, is it is it posted or is that in my inbox as well? Um, I believe Don, our HR staff, is currently working to get that out. She was aiming for this last Monday, but I don't believe it actually ended up posted. Um, so hopefully we'll see it early next week at the latest. Huh? Okay. Um, I think uh, Mark covered all the questions I had in engineering, so I'll go to... Finance and business. Um, so, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I noticed that our operating expenses um, are looks like they're nonlinear, which is good given that we are way down on um, uh, revenue. Where where have we cut back on our operating? And we have an estimate of where we're going to end up. I'm sorry, Bob, you, you, you broke off. Hey, can anybody hear him better than me? Yeah, I think lean in a little bit more, Bob. You're a little fuzzy there. Okay, let me try. Is this better? better? All right. Uh, sorry, you have to look at my face so big. Though. That's <laughs> that's not a good thing. That's why I'm back. Okay. Um, yeah, Rick, I, I noticed that we are um, uh, lower than expected on operating expenses. You would expect with one month to go to be at about 92%, but we're at 85. Where have we um, been able to cut back in the operating expenses? A big, a big reduction is in, it's in staffing. We have several positions not filled um, and that uh, you know, we're moving slow on filling. We haven't filled uh, uh, the uh, environment, uh, the uh, water quality manager uh, position. Uh, the uh, we've had one of retirement right after him. The assistant water quality uh, supervisor is gone. We have about four positions uh, that have been vacant uh, for some some time. We haven't moved yet on the uh, project inspector. Um, so there has been uh, some considerable um, reduction in staff, and that probably is the bulk on labor in the operating cost. I mean, we're also, I, I don't think uh, inventory shows up uh, on that report no. that you're looking at. Yeah, it does not. We're not, we're not replacing inventory. That, that's down. Um, and, uh, but we probably also have some pretty good expenses with, fuel and, and power uh, in the operating costs. But I, I would say the bulk of it, Bob, is personnel. Okay. There's also has a big cost that haven't been committed yet. Well, and, and that my next question was an estimate of where we're going to end up since we're, you know, well, I guess we're actually over the <laughs> end of the year. So. Right. And uh, go ahead. Yeah. So that, that just, as soon as we can get some kind of an idea, the reason it's, critical to me anyway is that the operating margin is what drives everything our ability to borrow money our ability to do capital infrastructure and right now we're at two million 
Um, you know, for the for each year, we should be around three or close to three, and we're we're short a lot. Going to impact us. Great. Okay. Um, Kendra is supposed to be coming back part time uh, at the first of the month, and so that's first on her list. Okay. To start getting those Great. analysis out there for you. For the okay. Point. A great. Then on two, um, the operations report, I was looking at the water that's being extracted out of the south system wells, and I wanted to make sure I'm reading this right. For June of 2013, we were extracting 13 and a half million gallons, and for June of 22, we're extracting six and a half. Are, are, we, are we sending them water from other areas? Wait a second. You... Hold on, let me, you, will you iterate what you just said again? Yeah, so June of 2013, we extracted 13.6 or 13.7 million. In June of 22, we extracted 6.4. Yeah, and that is because we've been able to supplement water from the surface sources down to the south system through the inner ties with those being installed after 2013. So it, we've been the, well Ooh. pumping in the south system has gone down year by year due to that and, and so we're 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 continuing for the for the month to do that i mean this is just last month so, so no so right yes for last month yes we were able to do that for this month no we are not we had to shut down all of it because our service sources are dropping dramatically right now and we're able to do that under an emergency declaration then Yes. You know, the, the, the December, January 10 inch rain, we benefited considerably all the way up into June yep. uh, with that surface water. And we took advantage of knowing that we were not going to have surface water once it dropped off uh, because of uh, the CZU. We took advantage of that excess surface water and tried to move it uh, down into the south system into the Loma area. And also and so, knowing that we were going to be pumping water out of those wells back to the north system during that time because of our surface sources not being installed. Right. And so I assume we're, we were sending Fall Creek water to the north system as well. Uh, we were sending, no, not so much to the north system. We were sending it to the south, south, system, south system. Not so much to the north system. Lion plant was supplying the north system sufficiently we just turned that around about three quarters of the way through june okay great you know that those kind of um, major events are of interest to me at least in terms of when we go from surface to the well and and it you know it kind of indicates um you know sort of when we start drawing on that groundwater and and that's at least for me that's an important event to know so thanks james i appreciate it and this is where conjunctive use, once we get oh, yeah. all back, this is you know what's going to show the district is probably pretty self-sufficient with conjunctive use and will not have the issues that other agencies will be having. Right. And that's that's why it's you know it's uh, really would be great to get that done as quickly as possible. I unfortunately we've been blocked a little bit on that. Yeah, getting those emergency usage on the inner ties lifted is Critical. a big step forward. Yep. Great, James, thanks very much, appreciate it. You're welcome. Anything else, Bob? Lowering hand, thank you, okay. I'll move my anything, head. Too. Anything else from any other uh, questions on department status reports? How about, uh, let's see, Mark? There's the one member of the public out there. Did you have any comments or questions? on that or how about on the committee reports no he's there working away on his notes um okay how about any comments from members of the board on uh committee reports not seeing any um we didn't have any written communications for this month so with that um without objection i will um adjourn this meeting Thank you all for an efficient meeting. Thank Good you. Night. Good, Good night, everyone.